Every once in a while, a world-class athlete appears who leaves everyone else in the dust. What more can we say about the shocking loss of tennis legend Nick Kyrgios and his winning streak? A loss to Hubert Hurgach in the quarterfinals of the Canadian Open in Montreal ended the star's winning run. Stay tuned to hear all there is to know about his crushing blow. To begin with, Nick Kyrgios lost to Hubert Hurgach while competing at the Canadian Open in Montreal. Nick Kyrgios was knocked out of the tournament in the quarterfinals by Hubert Hurgach, ending his winning run. The Australian had won 15 of his previous 16 matches before facing Hurgach, building on his run to the Wimbledon final by capturing an ATP championship in Washington last week. Despite seeming exhausted, Kyrgios came back to win the second set and even the match after dropping the first on a tiebreak. Kyrgios lost the third set 6-1 and raged at the umpire for allowing Hurgach to take a long toilet break, which contributed to his eventual 7-6, 6-7, 6-1 loss. As Kyrgios put it later, my body hasn't been feeling great this past week. Not playing for five or ten minutes won't improve your physique. After that, my whole body became so rigid that I could hardly move. My stomach ached. It's legal, so I won't whine, but it really made me tense up. Hurgach of Poland, the only remaining player with ATP Masters single championship experience, will face Kaspar Ruud of Norway, the tournament's fourth seed in the semifinals. Felix Auger Aliassime had a terrible day as he lost 6-1, 6-2 to the Norwegian favorite Alexander Zverev. Women's singles champion Simona Halep resumed her comeback with a 6-4, 7-6 victory against Coco Gauff in Toronto. Halep has now won all four of their previous matches against the American youngster without dropping a set. Moving on, Coco Gauff ascends to number one in doubles after winning with Pagula in Toronto. After winning the WTA 1000 with partner Jessica Pagula, the 18-year-old Coco Gauff ascended to the top of the Women's Tennis Association doubles rankings for the first time in history. On Sunday, the All-American pair won the championship after a 6-4, 6-7, 10-5 match tiebreak against the American-Australian combo of Nicole Melikar-Martinez and Ellen Perez. Astonished, oh my gosh, first in whatever. Following the game, while sitting on the bench together, Goff spoke to Pagula. Goff has reached her first two Grand Slam doubles finals in the previous 12 months at the U.S. Open with Katie McNally last year and at Roland Garros this year, and she has won two WTA 1000 titles with Pagula this year. This year, she and Chinese partner Chang Zhua advanced to the final of the Stuttgart Open. Goff climbed from sixth to first place, five places higher than her previous career high of fifth, which she had reached following the aforementioned Roland Garros final in June. After Switzerland's Martina Hingis, who was then 17, who initially topped the WTA doubles rankings on July 8, 1999, the 18-year-old is now the second youngest woman to accomplish this since the rankings were first kept in 1984. Following that, after further consideration, Nick Kyrgios has been removed off Australia's Davis Cup roster. Alex de Minor will lead the Australian Davis Cup squad to Hamburg, Germany next month in place of Nick Kyrgios. As of the Wimbledon final, Kyrgios had won 15 of his previous 16 matches. After winning the doubles title in Atlanta, the Australian went on to sweep both the singles and doubles titles in Washington. However, the Australian has decided to skip the Davis Cup group round matches in favor of resting up for the U.S. Open and returning home despite his stellar singles play and his double success with Tanasi Kokonakis in the Grand Slams. Kyrgios hasn't participated in the team competition since 2019. Although he would have been an asset to the squad, Kyrgios has set out the team competition. During the group stage of the tournament, both Deminar, the greatest player in Australia, and Kokonakis, the 20th best player in the world, will be able to compete in singles. Next up, parting words to Canada. Tennis star Serena Williams has begun her farewell tour after after announcing her retirement. In an article published on Tuesday by Vogue magazine and an Instagram post, Williams intimated that the U.S. Open, which starts on August 29th in New York, may be her last tournament. One of the best and most successful athletes of all time, Williams has said that she does not like the term retirement, preferring instead to think of this moment in her life as moving away from tennis toward other things that are important to me. She has more Grand Slam singles championships than any other player in the history of professional tennis, male or female. Margaret Court is the only player to win more than 23, and she did it while playing some of her career as an amateur. To say I don't want that record would be a lie. It goes without saying that I agree with you. Everyday life, though, doesn't involve much thought for her. That record does cross my mind when I'm competing in a Grand Slam final, Williams expressed. Maybe staying up late considering the scenario was counterproductive. I can see now that I could have won 30 or more Grand Slams if I tried. These days, if I have to pick between expanding my tennis career and establishing my family, 
family. I prefer the latter, Williams said. Her daughter, Olympia, will be five on September 1st, and she and Alex Ohanian, co-founder of Reddit, will be celebrating in style. So how do you feel about her leaving? Do you have something to say? Moving on, Novak Djokovic skipped his U.S. Open tune-up in Cincinnati because he was not vaccinated. Since Novak Djokovic is not permitted to enter the United States without first receiving the COVID-19 vaccination, he canceled his participation in the hard court event in Cincinnati, scheduled to begin the following week. For the same reason, Djokovic is not likely to compete in the U.S. Open, the last Grand Slam event of the year, which starts on August 29th in New York. Djokovic, a 35-year-old sir, is second only to Rafael Nadal in men's tennis history in major titles with 21. Djokovic has said that he will not be vaccinated against the coronavirus disease, even if doing so precludes him from competing in certain tournaments. He had to sit out the Australian Open in January after being deported from Australia, as well as two tournaments in the United States earlier this year and this week's tournament in Montreal, Canada. The press announcement declaring Djokovic's withdrawal from the Cincinnati event cited travel limitations, meaning that unvaccinated foreign people are now prohibited from entering Canada or the United States. Djokovic has said that he would not give up hope of competing in the U.S. Open, despite the fact that the U.S. Tennis Association has stated that it will not budge from its current position until the government changes its stance. Djokovic has won the U.S. Open three times and placed second last year, losing to Daniel Medvedev. Following that, fourth-seeded Kaspar Ruud defeats local hero Ajay Alassim in the National Bank Open. Fourth-seeded on Friday, Norwegian Kaspar Ruud advanced to the semifinals of the National Bank Open after cruising to a 6-1, 6-2 victory against local favorite Felix Ojay Alassim. It was one of those days when everything goes in one favor, and happily, it was my advantage, Ruud said after reaching his third Masters 1000 semifinal of the season. Ojay Alassim, who is seeded sixth, had a total of 21 unforced mistakes, whereas Ruud committed just eight. According to Ojay Alassim, my first two matches were decent, and there were some great things that happened. I never in a million years imagined it would end like this today. Number eight seeded Hubert Hurgach of Poland, who defeated Nick Kyrgios of Australia, 7 6 6 7 6 1, will be Rude's opponent in the next round. During the night session, Daniel Evans of Great Britain defeated American Tommy Paul, 1 6 6 3 6 4, while Pablo Carino Busta of Spain defeated British qualifier Jack Draper, 7 6 6 1. Both matches took place in Great Britain. Finally, Beatriz Haddad Maya advances to the quarterfinals of the National Bank Open. Beatriz Haddad Maya of Brazil advanced to the National Bank Open quarterfinals after defeating top-ranked Iga Swiatek of Poland, 6-4, 3-6, 7-5 on Thursday. In windy circumstances, Haddad Maya, 26, became the first Brazilian woman to reach the WTA 1000 quarterfinals after defeating a top-ranked player for the first time. Back-to-back grass champion in Nottingham and Birmingham, she arrived in Tokyo ranked 24th in the world, a career high. I experienced a lot of difficult times in my career, Haddad Maya said. I'm just 26 years old and have already had four operations, so I strive to appreciate my exceptional times. Schweitek had nine double faults to Haddad Maya's one. Right now, it's difficult to tell whether it was more her game or the win that screwed up my first set, Schweitek said. I believe she just made greater use of the circumstances than I did. When she was playing with the wind, she threw incredibly forceful balls, and I was occasionally late for them. Well, what are your opinions on this matter? That marks the end of our video. We hope you liked it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.